I recently finished an edge retention comparison for knives slicing cardboard. They all had the same edge angle. They had the same micro bevel angle and grid finish, 15 degrees per side, extra coarse DMT stone. They were used to slice cardboard with a 2 inch straight edge section of blade. The blades were at a 45 degree angle to the cardboard. They cut it with a speed of approximately 1 foot per second. Very tightly constrained. Goal is to achieve an accurate, precise result. However, I also let one other thing vary, which is kind of a point of interest. Normally, when I do cardboard cutting, I take all the cardboard that I have, put it in a big pile, mix it up, and then I randomly draw out pieces from that. That confuses some people, because they say, why do you mix it up? Aren't you putting in an error, source of error by doing that? You're making it a bit more random. Yeah, that's true, but random errors are not really that big of a problem, because random errors normalize out. And I'll just show you why. Here's a deck of cards. Let's assume when I draw a red card, it means that I'm cutting a very harsh piece of cardboard. It may have grit in it, it might just be a very hard piece of cardboard. So it is a much more dramatic effect of blunting. So the red cards blunt the edges much faster than the black cards. So again, I draw them out. So I get red, 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 black, black, red, black. So I'm getting a mix of cards. If I do that, and if I say now this represents the blunting that happens on one knife, if I do it again on another, black, red, black, black, red, black, 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 red, black. And you can think about, and it's very easy to understand, if you did quite a large number of cards, and then quite a large number of cards again, you'd expect the amount of red and black cards to be very similar because they're just randomly distributed. So if you do a large amount of cuts and the cardboard is randomly picked, you'll get the same sort of hard, harsh cardboard and soft, easy to cut cardboard. So the trials will be very consistent. You'll get the same results over and over again. But what happens if you don't do that, if you don't random sample? Well, then you could get something like this. You could pick up one box, cut it with one knife, and get black, 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 black. The cardboard's cut very easily. The knife does super well. Take another box with another knife. Red, 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 red. Two different types of cardboard. And now, that's what's called a systematic error. One knife is cutting all the black cardboard, very easy to cut, doesn't dull the edge very much. Another knife gets all the red cardboard, dulls the edge very harshly. And so what you could be seeing is more of the type of cardboard than the actual properties of the steel. So as an example, here's one pile of cardboard cut. Here's another pile of cardboard cut, and you can see, obviously, it's a very different sort of type of cardboard. Okay, all that statistical mumbo-jumbo aside, what actually happened? So, sharpen the knives, and ten times with each knife, sharpen the knife, cut the cardboard until it was dulled down to 1.5% of optimal sharpness, sharpen it, repeated it, sharpen it, repeated it ten times. And then I added up the amount of cardboard cut to produce a total. And I also looked at the average and the sort of standard deviations to make even a bit more statistics. And produce a couple of graphs. Who doesn't love graphs? What was the end result of all that? At most, at most, there was really weak evidence that these three knives, K390, M4, and VG10, might have better edge retention than the mystery $1 stainless steel knife, which is probably 3 Sierra 13 420J2 steel. But the evidence was so weak that it wouldn't pass any statistical test. It wouldn't pass an ANOVA comparison. There was no evidence at all that these three knives were different. They just randomly oscillated around each other. Now, 
What does that mean? Well, you can do even more statistics. You can do even more graphs. And you can show that if the cardboard varies by around 10 to 1, that's what you would expect. The difference in the cardboard is so large that even if you do multiple trials, 10 trials on each knife, the cardboard difference is so large that if you don't random sample and you cut a pile of one type of cardboard with one knife and a pile of another type of cardboard with another knife, the difference in cardboard is so large that it won't average out. You have to random sample in order to get a smooth distribution of cardboard so all the knives essentially see the same material. If you don't do that, you can't even tell the difference between a 420J2 knife and a CPM M4 knife. That's a kind of interesting comparison. Now, as a side note, you might ask, well, surely you would see it if you cut enough of it. Like, you only did 10 trials. If you kept doing it, wouldn't it eventually average out? Yeah, it eventually does. You can do even more statistics and even more graphs and show that if you did 50 trials with each knife, you'd most likely see a difference and then you'd see what the actual rankings would look like. But just think about the massive amount of cardboard that would, the massive amount of work that means. Each trial is around a quarter of a kilometer of cardboard. So 50 trials with each knife is 200 trials and each one of those 200 trials is a quarter of a kilometer of cardboard. So that's 50,000 meters of cardboard would need to be cut in order for you to say, yeah, okay, now I have decent evidence that these four knives have different edge retention. And again, this is if you don't random sample. That raises an interesting question about how important is steels really when the difference that the material you cut makes such a dramatic difference. The other question it means though is what about all those people who say that they did a comparison where they don't do this kind of statistical control and they say oh yeah well such a knife had some such small value over another knife and they claim that they can see it. Well frankly that's mainly and often a case of cognitive bias. People are seeing what they think they should see or what someone has told them and they believe that they should see and that's where the numbers comes up. So if they do an edge retention trial with say an M4 blade and it's rather low, they assume, oh yeah, well I must have not sharpened that properly, so they throw that result out. And then if they do an edge retention trial with something like this and the results go really, really well, they assume, oh well, you know, that cardboard must be very abrasive at all, I'm not going to count that. So again, what they think the results should be is influencing what the results came out to be. Both the math and the data actually show that in order to even see differences between 420J2 and M4, let alone something like M4 and 10V, you have to do very controlled statistical cutting, not only making sure the edge angles are the same and the apex angle is the same and the apex grit is the same and that you cut the cardboard the same and it's the same speed and it's the same force and it's the same method, you have to make sure that the cardboard is very consistent from one trial to another. And even if you don't do just one of these things, you let one of these things change, the results can easily be dependent on that one thing and not dependent on the steel at all, which is quite interesting. To me, anyway. So again, in short, I'm not saying that the edge retention in this steels are not different in an absolute sense they are different. But in a practical sense, actually measuring this, actually seeing it, actually having it be an influence is not nearly as trivial as a lot of people think. And that's why a lot of people who just practically use knives will often say things like, I really don't see a difference in edge retention. I could take a knife like this and I could sharpen it after maybe two days and then four days and then six days and then one day. And I could take a knife like this and I can sharpen it after two days, four days, six days, two days doesn't seem to be a difference. And again, that's because the materials that they're cutting or the way that they're cutting or the grits that they're using or the sharpness that they start off with is varying by enough that it's bigger than the difference in the steels. As another point of reality, you have to remember that the differences in these steels are rather small. Even if you look at, for example, catcher results, which are incredibly constrained, it's a machine doing repeated cutting on the exact same stock, well then something like VG10 and something like M4, which are at almost the limits of modern cutlery steel 
being VG10 is almost now considered an entry level steel and CPM4 is considered an upper tier steel. The difference between these, and that's an extreme difference now, from again entry level to upper level, is less than 2 to 1 on a catcher result. That's less than 2 to 1. So just think about when you're doing cutting, how easy is it to even see a difference between these two steels? If any of the things are changing, the angle, the grit, the material that you're cutting, how you're cutting it, speed, force, differences in geometry of the blade, differences in the handle ergonomics, how you actually hold it, how that makes it comfortable and controllable in hand, it's very easy for these things to change by more than two to one. And if those things are changing by more than a change in the steel, you want to actually see the difference in the steel. Kind of an interesting result. Now, uh, you might ask the question, well, what is the actual difference in these steels if we do do a proper statistical experiment and we do constrain all the other sources of error and minimize them? That's an interesting question. And I've looked at that and I've done other comparisons on carpet and cardboard and hemp rope and I've even done digging experiments on sods and there's links to them and you can actually look at it to see what happens if you do constrain absolutely everything, what the difference is in these steels. This experiment was a bit different and like I said I just wanted to show and I was curious if I didn't properly random sample the cardboard and I did cut different piles of cardboard would it eventually average out? After 10 trials it doesn't average out. It looks like I'd need to do 50 trials in order to average out which would mean maybe if I used all of these four knives for a year and kept track of how much I sharpened each one during a year over a year that would probably show some sort of significance but like on a weekly or monthly basis the randomness is just too much interesting result to me anyway and I would hope the one thing that you might take from this is generally be a bit skeptical about performance claims people make and especially when they start talking about small differences in steel as if they're critical like D2 versus ATS34 versus S30V these are all very similar steels if this comparison cutting couldn't tell apart VG10 from M4 and just barely told apart M4 from 420J2, what do you think you'd need to do to tell apart something like ATS34 versus S30V, which are very, very similar? You'd need an even more constrained test. You'd need an even bigger sample size. Rather than 50 trials of each blade, you'd be up to hundreds of trials of each blade realistically it's not going to happen until you start cutting very consistent media or random sample to ensure that there's no systematic bias. A lot of numbers, a lot of graphs. Hope it was a bit of an interesting conversation.